it would seem with this rather vociferous rhetoric between Beijing and Washington and uh, today's news that the uh, Chinese will implement the US trade deal that was all in the NPC work report on top of that they talked about the Hong Kong laws being perfected for national security all of that out of Pre Premier Li Keqiang is this really the moment when the gloves have come off Hi, Rich. Uh, great to be here with you. Um, I would say that the gloves came off a, a long time ago. I would attribute the uh, disappointing price action in um, risk this morning on the back of uh, a rather disappointing uh, NPC uh, in that a lot of asset markets really rallied uh, early this week and in, in, into the NPC on the hopes of big stimulus from China uh, today. And as it turns out, it, it's uh, really just another damp squib. Um, you know, some examples there is that, uh, you know, a lot of the fiscal measures uh, are coming in at the bottom end of uh, expectations. And likewise, with the monetary uh, policy, it looks like we'll get uh, more of this cautious, uh, steady as she goes policy. So nothing big bang. And certainly is the case that China is, or the PBOC and the Chinese government uh, are lagging the kind of stimulus measures that we're seeing out of the likes of Bank of Japan, uh, the Fed, uh, and the ECB. And that's going to have implications for Chinese growth as well. Um, so China proxies, uh, really not surprising to see them uh, selling off on the back of, uh, back of this. And Sue, well, there may be a damn squid of what's going on with the domestic economy. I suppose the, the big one for global players is certainly the need to, quote, perfect Hong Kong security laws. Now, this, according to the opposition here, is something which they suggest brings an end to Hong Kong as we know it. And uh, some have gone too far, as far as to say it's the end of Hong Kong as a financial hub as well. What's your take? I'm not so sure that you'll be allowed to say that, uh, sort of make that sort of statement, Rish, in, <laughs> in the future. Um, certainly is the case that the rumour is this new law would forbid secessionists and subversive activity uh, as well as foreign interference and, and, and uh, uh, Hong Kong asset markets are, are very nervous on the back of that. Uh, surprising to see Hong Kong stocks uh, sold off and, uh, you know, from the looks of uh, this rumoured policy, uh, it appears to be a backdoor method of invoking Article 23. Uh, Sue, you talk about how the market's possibly disappointed with uh, the MPC. Does that change your expectations of an reacceleration by year end by any chance? A reacceleration of uh, not too sure what you mean, Haslanda. Of the economy. Oh, of the economy. Uh, no, we're expecting reacceleration uh, of the economy continued. by year end. Right. We're actually expecting uh, quite the opposite, uh, continued structural deceleration in the Chinese economy. And actually, the risk is that uh, should China continue with this much more cautious and, and lagging uh, in terms of support policies, that growth differentials uh, or Chinese growth differentials will narrow. And uh, the, the risk, of course, is that the exchange rate becomes a relief valve. It's uh, interesting to me that uh, in this NPC they repeat the mantra that the yen will remain basically stable. Uh, we note that China characterised the move in dollar China from its previous peg of 8.28 to just above 6 as basically stable. They characterised the move from just above 6 to now above 7 as basically stable. And it stands to reason uh, that uh, further depreciation in the renminbi uh, would also be consistent with Chinese effect policy. It's certainly uh, the least cost. Uh, measure in our view for uh, China to take going forward and the consensus expectations for dollar China of below seven in 2021 uh, looks very optimistic. Of course, investors continue to look for yield in a very low rate environment. Where should they be looking? Should, should, should it be EM debt still, the likes of India, the likes of Indonesia? Well, Within the Asian region, uh, it really comes down to, uh, as with most asset classes actually, what your investment horizon is. Um, but within Asia, we continue to like Indonesia, India, Philippines. We think that uh, those economies uh, exhibit uh, very positive uh, structural aspects such as uh, domestic-driven growth. 
the fact that they stand to benefit from continued confrontation between uh, the US and China, i.e. Uh, further diversification of global supply chains. Uh, in the short term, however, uh, these economies uh, are at risk uh, in their own right from the continued domestic outbreak. So uh, there's a bit of nuance at, at play there, but um, short term, a little bit more cautious on these economies. Longer term, uh, we remain uh, strategically uh, uh, positive on these three Southeast Asian economies.